What's up guys? So today in this video, I wanted to show you how you can manage your entire SEO agency or entire SEO process if you're not an agency in one Airtable base and how you can really get optimized with managing your keywords, managing your blogs, your meta descriptions, everything for your SEO agency in one base, all of your clients as well. So if you're interested in that, keep watching the video. If you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS and what we do is we help business owners probably just like you help them optimize their information systems and stuff like Airtable, it's on the Slack, do a lot of workflow automation with Zapier. So if you're interested in that, click the link in the description to request a consultation from me or someone on my team. But without further ado, we'll get right into the video now. So now we are in this Airtable content asset tracker and I built this out to include a lot of different things for your business. So the first tab here is the blog. This, these are tables up here. So you have blog, there's a few optional things if you want them in your business, so, such as video email contacts if you want to start managing some contacts and get some backlinks from other people you can manage a little bit of your outreach in here with that if we just added another simple table for outreach but this is how the the blog table is the main table for this database and the way it works is you basically come in here and you have your writers have their own view in here where they can see their assignments so you would create another view in here and before that, you would create a form similar to this. So you would have this new blog post assignment. You would have your writer, you'd add them in here. You would add like the title of the post, add whatever keywords you want them to be targeting, add the pane for them, the secondary keywords, whatever funnel you want this to be in. You could also add a persona. So if this is being written under a certain person's like point of view, you can create those and have different ones and have different blog posts link up to those personas. You can also do internal linking, so self-link if you want to have all of your blogs in here, you can say, okay, for this new blog, I want these three different blogs to be linked in here. You can have a description of the post and then a link to the draft. You can just either have that in here or you can have a new record in Airtable automatically create a new Google Doc for this person to fill out. And the beauty of this is if you're only sharing a view with them and you have that automation set up, you can have that just automatically create that new draft in Google Docs and have it automatically link in here. And then you can set that draft due date as well. So if we come back to here, so if I come back to these other views, basically you would create another view in here and you would come over here, move myself, create another grid view and you would filter this. So if I chose this person, then I would filter it. So if we add some people in here first, we can add John in the contacts and we can filter a post. All of John's blog posts that he has to write, we can give him this view right here and we can filter this by status where this contains John. And then he can come in here and see all of the descriptions that he needs to add and then he can go in there and edit that and build out that blog post, build it with those panes, build it with all of that stuff with these linked records. He'll have all the resources he needs without actually having to have edit, editable access in Airtable. So that's how that works. And you can also link up your Google Analytics. Like if I come over here and I add another view over here, I can add a view where I only see Google Analytics and you can connect this with Google Analytics to automatically pull in that data. So this will be Analytics. And basically in this view, what you would want to do is you wanna hide a bunch of these fields such as basically all of this stuff. So all of these, these things and you basically just want these things at the end and I'll show you those after I get done unclicking these but you could have Google Analytics based on the post title post URL you can have them automatically pull in the average session dura duration the bounce rate the trial started the organic traffic and all of that so I highly encourage you to check that out if you want that automated Google Analytics setup maybe you want to run that every month see what keywords it's ranking for and everything have that automatically pulled in as well and so you can also manage what companies you're reaching out to to have backlinks and maybe their articles and you can manage those in here and say you want to have a target company for one of your blog posts maybe you just want to be keeping track of which companies you're reaching out to you can keep track of that in here as well and so if we go back to this grid view over here we can see some more of these links that i was telling you about so the internal links say this is article one this is article two if we want to in article one, we can link that to article two. Maybe we want that internal link in there. And we can also come over all the way over here and do backlinking so we can figure out, okay, which articles do we want to be backlinking this to? Is there a main landing page or a main homepage 
for our website that we want to be backlinking to, we can add that in here. And then we can add all of the blogs that we are backlinking to that article in here. You could also do this in a similar way if you just added that in the blog, but I think it's better managed if you figure out what are our main things that we are backlinking to and then add those in here. And that way you can do some roll up data. You can see some summary, like how many people viewed that. You can see, you can roll up all of these different things that you pull in with the Google Analytics into this analytics table. You can see all of those rolled up. So you can see the total, they're the average, average session duration for all of the backlinked articles. You could also see the average bounce rate, the average trial started, the average organic traffic from all of those, or you could sum it all up if you want to get some summary data to see which ones you're having the most backlinks to. Maybe you need to work on some backlinks for some of your other, other articles. You can see all of that summary data maybe in this backlinking table over here. And the way you would do that is you would just say, if this is our main or this is our index, then we want to backlink this one in article article one or blog one and that one, the second one and that one, and we also want to backlink in this first one to the main as well. So you can see all of that and then you can pull in that summary data if you add some roll-up fields over here. So if I add a roll-up field here, I could, maybe if I want to do the blog, I could do a field where I sum up the average duration by coming in here, finding the, maybe we'll do organic traffic and we can do sum here. And so if we had that information in there already in the blogs table, that would sum up that. So we can show you that real quick as well. So maybe this one's 500, this one's 1000. And we come back over here to the backlink table. Then we can see that over here now. So we can see for this one, because there's two articles here, I added those up. There's 1500 total organic traffic coming to those articles. And you could also pull in that same data that Google Analytics for your main articles, for your main, your index, whatever those main landing pages or home pages that you want to be tracking, you can have that in here as well. And then over here, I have an automations table. I'm not gonna go into all of the automations that I would set up for this, but this is essentially a resource hub for all of the automations that I would recommend setting up. You should probably set up a similar thing so that if somebody notices that something's not working, they can come in here to the automations. They can see all of the Airtable automations, all of the Zapier automations that are live for your database here to manage all of your blog data. So another thing you can do is you can set up email automation. So maybe a blog goes out and you want it to do an email as well. You can link your blog to an email. And once that blog goes live, maybe you want to send it to the email. So if we come back over here to the grid view where we can see everything and I'll hide this, we can see that if we scroll over, if we scroll over more, we can see that we eat, that we link to, we can see over here that we link to the email table as well. So you can really set this up in a number of ways, whether you want email automation, social media automation to come to life in here, you can set it up so that when a blog goes live, when that date is live on the blog, you can set it up, send an email to my whole email list. Maybe you use active campaign or convert kit or whatever. You can have it automatically talk to that with Zapier when this blog goes live from Airtable. And you can also set it up to where it maybe sends a tweet out on your Twitter account or sends a LinkedIn page post on your LinkedIn page, Facebook page post as well. And if it has like a picture, you could set it up to where you're managing your social media in here as well. And for every blog post that goes out, it posts on Instagram. So yeah, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you can set all of that up here with these automations to where like when a record enters a view, AKA you would set up a filter to say when the, when the published is today, and you can set up more filters to make sure you like check a box or do more approval systems. You can have that automatically post on Facebook, all of those social media platforms I just mentioned. So that's just really a high level view of how you can set up a content asset tracker or a blog manager or a SEO tracker for your agency, for your business. And you can use these similar tables to this. It would really need to be custom based on what all you want to incorporate in your blog tracker, in your SEO tracker, in your content asset tracker as to what metrics you're tracking and what data you want to be linking up and pulling in and figuring out which panes you want to be targeting, which personas you want to be targeting, and then implementing those into your Airtable database right in here. And then also you'll want to create these different views such, such as this, this one right here. Now this one is for, we would re rename this and say John's projects and you could also even filter it down to where he only sees the 
ones that haven't been published yet. So maybe the publish date is after today. So you can see which ones haven't been published yet. And, or if you want to add a status in here to say it's not been published or it's published, have all of that happen in the same time, maybe an update record automation to where once it is published, then it updates the record that it was published. You can set all of that up in here so it's very clean and very slick for your contractors, such as like the people writing your blogs, whoever you're using for outreach, if you want to use people for outreach to get more backlinks, and you can set all of that up in here very well. There's also an optional video component here, so if you want to maybe have a video in all of your videos, a video in all of your blogs, you can set that up as well. Um, so you could have this and then you could unhide one of these linked fields so you can have the videos tied to a persona, have the videos linked up to the blog, and you could incorporate within, and it can be optional, within a blog you could link it to a video, have that video embedded in the blog, or maybe just for every blog you do, you wanna do a video about it as well, and you can sort of cross-pollinate some of your content using this. And you, this all, all the video content is also easily automated to upload to YouTube, if that's something you want to do. And you can use some of these similar tools such as the Google Analytics, but for YouTube, to automatically pull in the views, the impressions from that YouTube video. So I highly encourage you to check this out. If you want to recreate something like this, you can sort of use what you've seen here, or if you want to request a consultation to get something like this set up for your business, you can do that down below. Now, if you want to see how I did that form, and you want to see over here how I created a form to have these new assignments, you can just go check out this end screen right here. You can see what exactly I did in there to create the linked records, to create all these fields, to create this form so that you can just fill this out and then it'll maybe automatically send a Slack message. I also have a video on how to automatically send those Slack messages so that you can notify your writer that they've had another assignment added to their view. But if you wanna learn how to do Airtable forms, go check this end screen out right here and you can learn all about how to do Airtable forms and it'll give you everything you need. Then you can really start building out your whole Airtable database to manage all of your SEO, all of your blogs, all of your writing and that whole process. Just go click that link how to how to build their table forms and I'll see you there.